Do you know what pyroclastic flows are? They are one of the most dangerous and destructive forms of volcanic activity. These flows can bury entire villages, destroy infrastructure and kill thousands of people. In this video, we will take a look at what pyroclastic flows are, how they form and what their consequences are. Get ready for a fascinating and terrifying journey into the world of volcanic danger. Welcome to the Top Topics channel. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and let's go to the new video. A pyroclastic flow is a flow of hot gases and solid particles that move rapidly down the slope of a volcano after an eruption. These flows typically occur during eruptions of stratovolcanoes that are characterized by explosive activity. Pyroclastic flows can be very dangerous and destructive because they can move at speeds of several hundred kilometers per hour and can destroy anything in their path. Pyroclastic flows can also start fires, as the hot particles can ignite surrounding vegetation and buildings. Pyroclastic flows are very difficult to predict, so in the event of a volcanic eruption, it is important to follow the instructions and warnings of local authorities and to evacuate from the danger zone as quickly as possible. Pyroclastic flows are caused by the rapid release of energy from a volcanic eruption. During an eruption, a large amount of hot gases and materials including glowing ash, volcanic dust, rocks and lava are released from the crater of the volcano. These materials are forced out of the volcano's crater under height pressure and velocity, creating a pyroclastic flow. This flow can have temperatures above 1000 degrees Celsius and can move at speeds of several hundred kilometers per hour. Pyroclastic floats can be triggered by various factors, such as changes in magma pressure in the volcano's crater, disruption of the volcanic dome or chambers beneath the volcano, or sudden release of steam when magma comes into contact with water. These factors can increase the pressure and energy in the magma chamber, which can trigger an eruption and pyroclastic flow. The speed and distance to which a pyroclastic flow can spread depend on many factors, such as the strength of the eruption, the type of volcano, the topography of the surrounding area, and many other variables. However, most pyroclastic flows move at the speeds of several tens to several hundreds of kilometers per hour and can spread up to several tens of kilometers from the volcano. The flow usually spreads down the slope of the volcano, so the closer you are to the eruptive crater, the greater the risk that you will be affected by the pyroclastic flow. Examples of pyroclastic flows from the history The eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79 was one of the most well-known volcanic disasters in history. Pyroclastic flows from Vesuvius destroyed the ancient city of Pompeii and other settlements in the vicinity, and killed thousands of people. The eruption of Mount Vesuvius was characterized as a Plinian eruption, which means it was highly explosive and caused powerful eruptions of volcanic ash and materials. In the following hours and days, pyroclastic flows appeared on the volcano which spread down the slope of the volcano at the speeds of up to 700 km per hour. The pyroclastic flow that hit Pompeii was about 25 meters high and flowed at the speed of about 100 km per hour. The flow was full of volcanic ash, pumice and rocks, which caused devastation in the city. People who were in Pompeii had no chance to escape and were buried and covered by volcanic materials. The eruption of Mount Vesuvius and the pyroclastic flows that occurred there caused enormous damage and loss of human life. At the same time, this disaster provides scientists and archaeologists with a unique view of life in ancient Rome, as most of Pompeii was preserved under a layer of volcanic materials. And the research of this site has allowed for a better understanding of daily life in ancient times. The eruption of Krakatoa volcano in 8083 was one of the largest eruptions in modern times. The eruption caused strong pyroclastic flows and generated a tsunami that hit the coast of Indonesia and other parts of the Indian Ocean. 
The pyroclastic flows that occurred during the eruption were very powerful and reached speeds of up to 1000 km per hour. These flows flowed down the volcano's slope and caused massive destruction on the coast, where the entire cities and villages were destroyed. Pyroclastic flows were also associated with high temperatures, which caused most people and animals on the coast to suffocate immediately. Pyroclastic flows during the Mount St. Helens eruption were also associated with huge clouds of volcanic ash that floated in the air and could be seen up to hundreds of kilometers away. These clouds of volcanic ash caused transportation problems because they reduced visibility and could cause plane crashes. The eruption of Pinatubo showed how destructive pyroclastic floats can be and what impact volcanic activity can have on surrounding areas. This eruption caused massive pyroclastic flows that had a catastrophic impact on the surrounding areas. The Pinatubo eruption began on June 9, 1999 and lasted until August of that year. During the eruption, huge amounts of volcanic ash, dust and gas were released. These materials created a large column of volcanic dust and ash that rose to a height of 40 kilometers above the Earth's surface. During the eruption, massive pyroclastic flows were also created, moving down the volcano's slope at speeds of up to 100 km per hour. These flows were very destructive and caused extensive damage in the vicinity of the volcano. For example, entire villages were destroyed in the Lahar area and many people died. The total number of casualties from this eruption is estimated to be more than 800 people. As you may have seen, pyroclastic flows are one of the biggest and most dangerous risks associated with volcanic activity. No matter how prepared we are, humans often become helpless victims to these destructive forces. It is therefore important for people living near volcanoes to follow instructions and warnings from experts and to adhere the evacuation plans. With a better understanding of this phenomenon and the risks associated with it, we can reduce the risk of human loss and minimize property damage. If you are interested in this topic, don't hesitate to learn more about volcanic activity and watch our next videos on volcanoes and geology. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out any videos in the future. And I will see you at the next video.